This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Excuse me. The Board of Education is about to meeting is about to begin at 6.30 p.m. on December 13, 2018. I'd like to make a motion to the Board of Ed um, tonight that we revive our agenda just a, a tad. And when our athletic, we have our report on our athletic committee with the uh, action item to vote that we allow as per our standard policy five minutes of discussion from the public to ask us questions before the vote is taken, instead of waiting till the end of the meeting and the vote has already been taken. So that's a consideration that I'd like to give to those who have something to say. But based on the emails and the phone calls that I've received in the last few days, we can get this done. I want to listen to people's comments and <coughs> hopefully Randy's presentation will answer a lot of your questions. But five minutes um, is all that I'm going to allow because that is a board policy. I know many of you know that I, I tend to go, let it go on, but at this, this meeting I, I'm not going to um, go well past five minutes. So, so may I have a motion to make that amendment? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Any Aye. further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So our first item on the agenda, does everyone have an agenda who needs one? Because some of, the, some of you, it's my first time I've seen you at a meeting, so thank you very much for coming. Um, it's the minutes of the November 8th, 2018 meeting. Um, um, just for tonight, just want to let you know, um, Rand, um, Jen Ciccarelli is out, is out, she's ill tonight. So and so is Frank. And so our Frank, our business manager, so some of those things will run a little quickly, and we have Joe here that we're, we're hoping can stay healthy. <laughs> um, okay, so meaning the minute meeting for um, November 8th, 2018. And also I'd like to look at the consent agenda for the resignation of our North Haven Middle School science teacher, Candace Cambriel. The retirement of Miss Mary Pilato, our school nurse at the high school, and retirement of our admin assistant at the guidance department, Daria Gambardella. So that's, uh, may I have approval of the consent agenda, please? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passed. So tonight I'd like to welcome, as always, our uh, student representatives. But tonight we have a new representative, uh, Zoe Burns. And Zoe, can you just tell us a little bit about you, what grade you're in, what you're doing? And she volunteers because <laughs> I have seen her at different uh, things. Um, I'm Zoe Burns. I'm a junior at the high school. Uh, I'm very involved, I guess, in the school. I'm in diversity club, student council, uh, debate club. And a couple other clubs, and I help out with sports teams and things like that. And I really just enjoy being involved, and that's kind of why I uh, submitted an application for this. And I'm kind of really excited. So okay. we're really <laughs> excited to have you here along with Thank Tim. You. So what happened at this point after major thing is you come in and you give us your little rep your report of what's been happening with the school and the class. I don't know if you and Tim have, have talked at all, or if you know each other. You must know each other. I know of. <laughs> um, sometimes it might be an idea, a good idea or two before your meetings, if it's something school-wide, figure out which one of you will be, will be discussing it too. But if you want to give us your first um, report, we'd appreciate it. Okay, so, I mean, right now it just happened in the school. Uh, we just started rehearsing for the musical, callbacks happened, and the musical this year is Beauty and the Beast. Uh, we just had Santa's breakfast for the younger kids, uh, National Honor Society, and the choir helped to sing at that for new service hours. We also just had the senior to senior breakfast for the seniors. Uh, and and the seniors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, student council is also, also uh, student coming up with a food drive. I'm not 
completely sure when that is, but that's happening as well. And Tell yourself. Uh, Zoe covered uh, <laughs> most of them. So my class in particular, we're still planning some more fundraisers, like the Bagelicious one. We're just trying to secure um, secure Bagelicious first, and also how many bagels and just all the profits and all the work that goes along with that. And we're also thinking of doing like a student, like a teacher versus student basketball game that might go down in January. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. about it for now. All right, great. Um, I also just, one thing we just met today with Dr. Dalai was uh, we're kind of having a, trying to do something with a sort of diversity sort of uh, promotion in the school before break. Uh, trying to show a video, maybe during the advisor or something that the students come up with, like spreading awareness for like certain words and things like that. So we're also like working on little projects like that too. With diversity? Yeah. That's great. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, so my report will be little short. Um, I heard the senior to senior breakfast was just wonderful. I ran into several people at the grocery store. I was away traveling for work and couldn't attend, but it's a nice program what we do for school. I just also would like to let everyone know, as many of you know, Dr. Cronin is is, has handed in his retirement for December 31st or January 1st? January 1st. For January 1st. We have a committee uh, that has been doing a superintendent Search and we are in are in the uh, process of interviewing, but we have not um, hired anyone or have decided on a uh, candidate yet. So Dr. C uh, Cronin has agreed to stay on until a new <coughs> superintendent is hired and available to start with us. So um, when Dr. Cronin cannot be available, our assistant superintendent Melinda McKenna will continue to um, step in for Dr. Cronin as she does now when um, Dr. Cronin is not there. So I did send out an email to the staff at um, the North Haven Board of Ed just to let them know what was going on, but I just want to let everyone know publicly that Dr. Cronin will be here until we um, hire a new superintendent. And this is really a way just to keep Dr. Cronin from retiring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're easing him into it, as I said. <laughs> and I, and I, I have to say I really appreciate Dr. Cronin wanting to continue with that and, and with his commitment to, to, to our school system. So thank you for that, for all that you do. And he's staying on because it means I get to delay the big party I want to have for him. <laughs> <laughs> he won't be doing. Yes, is Dr. Cronin still be in charge of uh, uh, snow days? Absolutely. Yes, yes. January. Mrs. McKenna may be taking over. That was the only way we could make the agreement. <laughs> snow days are, are all his. you at 4 30? Nope. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. We'll continue. And we'll try to make those announcements in the evening as much as, as possible. As much as we can. Yeah. yeah, as much as possible. Okay, um, is there any unfinished business from last month that we need to talk about? Okay, with that, any new business that we need to bring up? Okay, um, so we'll go to the report of the standing committees. Let's start with ACES. Yes, we had our meeting today, and um, December is always the, the, the fun meeting because it's the student artist recognition they um, design ACES uh, holiday cards t-shirt mug, which as the rep, I get one of each. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'd like to go and then don't lunch. Um, but it is very, they bring the students in and everybody claps and they take pictures and it's wonderful. Um, the uh, Ed Foundation um, Gala for ACES is March 28th. That's always a fun time and that's gonna be with Anthony's Ocean View. And um, the other news is that um, East Haven is looking into joining the uh, Health Insurance Collaborative, which is good because that widens the uh, pool of people. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Curriculum instruction and planning? Yes. Um, Jane Hayland from the uh, Community Health Center and Dana Corvo discussed a proposal with us to install a school-based community health center, which is a private clinic, to be housed in the um, high school? No, middle school. Middle school, okay. And uh, this would allow students, regardless of whether or not they're insured, to get, uh, get no-cost health services 
including, um, but not necessarily limited to, clinical, individual, and group counseling for issues such as depression, anxiety, and trauma. Um, while the committee seemed generally in favor of the proposal, a number of questions emerged, and we suggest a follow-up presentation to the full board, perhaps in February. Um, Jill Metz and Sue Bass joined us to propose <coughs> a level change to AP for Humanities, a two-credit team-taught course covering historical, social, philosophical, religious, and artistic aspects of various cultures. The committee is in favor of the change. Uh, Patrick Sturk joined the group to provide an update on an alternative for students who don't wish to attend Nature's Classroom. Um, discussed was a four-day comprehensive program offered by Common Ground School in New Haven, which would cost about $150 per student, including transportation for the four-day program. Patrick uh, anticipates about 70 potential attendees. Um, Given the single site, easy access, and comprehensiveness of the program, the committee is in favor of moving forward with plans to implement that. Uh, it sounded like a really nice program. Um, we approved three new clubs, the American Sign Language uh, Club, the Step Dance Club, and Leo Club, which is the Lions Club. For the middle school. For the middle school. Where's the step school? The step school. Oh, the step school, dance. The high, high school. school. Was that like Irish yeah. step dancing, um, or just, no, just I don't know. No, just a variety of dancing. Okay, okay great. <coughs> and that's my report. <coughs> okay, but you're going to bring back the other people um, to the, about the health clinic mm -hmm. in yes, February. Yes, we have. Um, we thought February would be inappropriate, and if we can't do February, <coughs> meeting, we'll do March, but. Um, so I also just have to ask another <coughs> question because I did budget season. Will we look into that now? Um, there's no cost. Well, there's no cost. Right, no cost. Okay. That's free. <coughs> uh, finance and operations? Finance and operations did not meet, unfortunately, because uh, Frank was ill and a couple members on that committee were also ill. Uh, but just kind of reiterating what Frank has said in the past, this is the time of the year we're working on closing out the prior year budget with the town and the auditors, working on the current year budget, and also in the preparation of preparing next year's budget, which uh, the administration up here uh, has been meeting with all of the administration at the schools, and our meetings will be starting January 10th, 17th, and 24th for our budget meetings. Also. With the transition up here uh, in the finance office for the Board of Ed, Frank has been meeting with the town on a monthly basis to kind of just make sure everything is in line with where it should be. Uh, so nothing falls through the cracks, and this time of the year everything is good. Okay, I'm um, just to go with everyone who heard the dates he gave. One was January 10th, which is our regular, regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. So if we have no business, uh, important business to discuss that, that night, we'd like to use that night for our, our, our workshop. The, the reason for that is um, originally we had thought that we would do um, the 17th, the 24th, and the 31st. Our presentation to the town is February 2nd. Okay. And the um, Board of Finance likes to have the um, budget <coughs> five days prior to the presentation so that they can review it before we meet with them. And um, so that left um, January 3rd, um, the day, day after we get back, or January 10th. And so if we can, um, if we can reserve the 10th, that would be great. If we have to do the 3rd, well, we can do that too. Okay. Can I ask a question about that? Yeah. Uh, last year, each night reviewed a, a section of yes. the budget. Is that going to happen again this yes. year? Yes. So the the tenth is going to be um, elementary, uh, each of the elementary budgets and um, facilities. The seventeenth um, is going to be the middle school, high school, and athletics. And then the 24th is the Department of Special Services and the Department of Educational and Informational Technology. Thanks. Okay. I'm sorry, we're 10, 17, 24, and at 6, are we meeting at 6 or are we keeping it at 6? I think. Um, we did, but that was one of my, the questions I have during my report is, um, that's okay. I, I, 
and looking back at last year, I think we started at 5.30. I think we did start earlier. And we had earlier. dinner. Okay. Um, so I don't know if that's something you want to repeat this year or move it, bump it to 6 or 6.30. Oh, it works for everyone. Can everyone get here for 5.30? All right, we'll do 5.30, start at 6. Okay, 5.30, dinner. <coughs> okay. Uh, I hate to bring this up, but what happens if there's a snow night? I mean, a, a bad snowstorm on one of those days. We've always made those up on Saturdays if we had to. Right. Yeah. Okay. Saturday we deal morning. With Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah, we so the following... Saturday. So automatically, so it's the 17th, the, the, that Saturday morning. Right. Is that um, the holiday weekend? Yes. Martin Luther King. Actually, the 17th is. Yeah, that's a holiday weekend, fall. so we would probably, but it's the 18, 19, you know, Friday, <coughs> yeah. Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. So I'm thinking for that weekend, if there should be snow, we do it on the Tuesday night, because Saturday would okay. is a holiday. So that would be the 22nd. Yeah, and then okay. we just continue on. And do the 24th. Yeah. 22nd. Is everyone in agreement with that yep. because of that holiday weekend? And if there are snow nights on the other two, we will do them this Saturday that corresponds to that right. week. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Also, too, um, <coughs> excuse me, Brian, if you may have been saying this, we are looking for, we, uh, we have uh, it out for a new <coughs> finance director. We are taking in applications now, is that correct? Mm -hmm. so we, we hope to have somebody in a... Uh, in a month or a couple of months, but Dr. Cronin, you have maybe brought that up in your... Yeah, yeah the goal would, is really to have somebody by um, the middle of January. Mm -hmm. So we have received applications. We've, um, I've gone over those with our interim business manager, and um, we've had two candidates in. We have a third coming next week, and then we'll make some decisions in terms of moving forward, and then I'd like, the goal would be to bring two to you um, as soon as we can um, for your decision. Thank you. Perfect. Probably like stepped into everything That's you wanted right. to say. <coughs> okay, middle school building committee. Uh, the committee met Monday, I wasn't able to make it, but I got, I spoke with Gary, the chair, and also <coughs> the, uh, the minutes. Uh, the main item on the agenda was basically the, the floors for the basketball court. Uh, so right now, as it stands, the architect is uh, doing a design for what the court is going to look like. And based on the design, they plan to actually put it out to bid in January. And based on the bid responses and everything, they'll make a decision. And then if it goes through, it's going to be done in, uh, over the summer, during the summer break. So that was the main agenda uh, item, and then they paid uh, approved couple of invoices and uh, other administrative stuff. Next meeting has not been scheduled yet, uh, just because of the holidays, but they plan to meet sometime in, in January. So the replacement of the floors, and I think I asked you this either last meeting or the meeting before, yeah. is coming out of the middle school contingency fund? Or? It's going to have the, if it's going to be paid for, the, the committee is going to pay for it. They have um, funding available to cover that. The committee is going to pay yes. for that? Yes, yeah. Okay. I don't know the details of how it's going to work out, but they have to see what the bid is going to look like. The lady who represents Gilbane had given a general estimate of about 300 and something thousand dollars. Uh, but we don't know what the bid is going to look like until after the architect has designed the whole thing and, you know, it's gone out to bid. And we have to put in a new floor. Why? So when we initially looked at it, when the experts looked at it and everything, uh, they said it needed to just be resurfaced and refinished and everything. But what happened is later down uh, the road, we found out that it was, Phil, correct me, I don't know if I'm using <laughs> the right, I'm getting to your territory now. When, when what's happening with the floor is it, once we sanded it down to its uh, wood finish and we added air conditioning into the building, uh, proper heating, moisture, the floor started to move. What happens when they urethane the floor with four coats of urethane, instead of each piece being able to expand a little bit and move, there were several, because of the urethane, that were held together, that moved together, which made spaces a little bit bigger uh, than anybody really wanted. So at this point, 
they are actually closing a little bit and moving a little bit. The floor is going to keep moving, uh, but it was a uh, decision was made by the committee to actually put a new floor in. Um, and we did have some uh, conditions that people have been complaining about with odors in the building, and it's very possible that it's coming from beneath the floor. I don't have been able to say it that way, so it's a good thing. It's a lot of, lot of, <laughs> it's a a lot of money that I know was wanted to be spent elsewhere. Yeah, it's it's an expensive project. Yeah. Okay. Uh, North Haven Education Foundation, too? They met yesterday. <coughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't feeling good and I didn't attend their meeting. Okay. I know for myself, their Community Stars program, uh, Mr. Mikes, congratulations. I was not able to attend once they changed the date. That happened but I, to a lot of people, yeah, But I heard it was, it was very nicely done and very well attended. Um, so congratulations to them, our, our Community Stars. Uh, policy. <coughs> I just... I just kind of gave somebody a, a new charge on policy right before our meeting started, <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. There's nothing to report on, on our policies. We have been keeping updating the mandated ones there, but now all of our policies are about three years old, so, so we are updating them. PTA Council? We met in November, and um, we had lots of discussion about the fundraising items that are happening at the high school. It looks like the student council is going to host a food drive. Um, the middle school had the Harlem Wizards, and that was a huge success. Everybody really enjoyed that. They came and did um, little expositions for all the elementary schools as well, and they were really well received by the elementary schools. My kids loved them. Um, Clintonville is doing Trees of Hope for Ronald McDonald, and they just did Laps for Lionheart, and the Holiday Bazaar happened on December 1st. That was very well attended, and it was a great event, as always. Um, Monowice is doing the Lyman Orchard fundraiser. There's a basketball night um, coming up on December 18th. And it looks like the Ridge Road playground construction is underway, and there might be a potential anti-bullying theme for a fifth grade program there as well. So lots of good stuff going on there, and our next meeting is January 9th. What is the Lionheart program? Laps for Lionheart is they raise money and the kids walk around the school and, and donate the money to, um, I think it's cancer research. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So as I, uh, right now we're going to go into our um, ad hoc athletic committee presentation. And for those of you that came in late, as I mentioned, we did change our agenda tonight to allow for uh, questioning after um, Ms. Peterson gives her presentation to the board. So um, those who did come in, they will be allowed questioning or comments, limited to a uh, five-minute discussion. Are we going here? <clears throat> yeah, so in your um, packets, what you will find is um, a draft of the um, proposed rental charges for the turf field and the athletic complex um, regarding group two, and I will explain all of that in just a minute, but um, the fees and everything are outlined there, and I'm pretty sure you, uh, you never mind, we had it for what, eight days or something, I think so. You had time to look at it, so please ask me any questions as we go through. Um, so yeah, Amanda, I mean, um, Melinda, if you could just hit that. I'll get out of the way. No, I think you're fine, because I could sit here. I can't sit. There we go. Okay. Come brighter? Yes. Oh, well, bright enough. Yes. Oh, that's more fun. It builds suspense. <laughs> well, yeah. There we go. Okay. Um, so, let me begin by. <coughs> we go to Mina? Yeah, I'm just going to stay back here so I can see. Okay. So, the Athletic Ad Hoc Committee was put together. Um, oh, hold on. Why is this not working? Oh, I need to put it on. Hold on one second. Sorry. There we go. Um, why and when was this committee formed? And I, I really feel like, um, let me say before I actually get into this, that given the um, opposing opinions of how this really should um, play out, I feel it's really necessary to go through the history of how this began to where we are now. So this way um, I can inform you as thoroughly as possible and then hopefully answer some of the questions that you have as we go through. Um, so why and when was this committee formed? So the committee was formed 
Um, I want to say, I think we first met back in April, and Anita Anderson decided to form this ad hoc committee specifically to address issues pertaining to the use of North Haven Public Schools turf and grass fields. And when I say grass fields, I mean specifically at the athletic complex. So committee members included Board of Education members, Steve Blumenthal, our athletic director, Phil Diana, our head of facilities, Andy Del Vecchio, who is the assistant director of the Department of Recreation, youth league presidents, coaches, and parents, as well as community members. Um, I don't expect you to read all of this. I just wanted to show you that there is a policy in our bylaws, policy 9133, and I brought this up specifically to focus on the two red areas. The first one being, the board recognizes the importance of considering the viewpoints of all stakeholders in the governing process. That second red section I highlighted um, reads, the goal of the advisory committee is to inform the board of the viewpoints of key stakeholders in the community. The board will review and consider information collected by an advisory committee. All decisions regarding policy programs and operations will remain with the board. So um, our committee had, um, was unable to come up with one decision um, as to how to go forward here. So what I'm going to do is present to you the various um, views that the members of the committee had. And then we as a board can discuss and move to vote. What was this committee charged with? Well, we had to identify systems, procedures for using turf and grass fields regarding the calendar, reserving time on the fields. That was all taken care of. We also were charged with um, coming up with fees for the grass fields for various user groups and for turf fields for various user groups, and I'll explain that in a second. We were also charged with ways in which monies can be raised to assist with the replacement costs in 10 years. We tabled that for now um, for a couple of reasons, and I'll get to that in a little bit as well. So when we talk about the different user groups, as defined by the Board of Ed Policy 3515B, um, we have four different groups. Group one um, re, uh, refers to school functions under the direction of the principal and or teachers. For example, North Haven student groups, North Haven staff, school-related groups, school-related fundraising activities. Group two, which is what we're focusing on tonight, is North Haven town departments, town government, and parent organizations and other town governmental or not-for-profit agencies. For example, um, town sports, town youth leagues, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Rec Department. Group three, nonprofit community organizations and use for charitable purposes. For example, North Haven service clubs and organizations, Cedar Citizen groups, God help them if they want to use our, our fields, that would be great, um, and church groups. And then group four, um, commercial for nonprofit organizations, commercial groups organized for the purpose of an event to make a profit. For the purposes of tonight, we are going to focus on, um, and this is the motion that will be stated in a minute, um, fees for North Haven Public School Athletic Complex grass fields and fees for our turf fields. That is specifically what we're focusing on. And we are focusing on group two, which is, um, just to re rephrase, the town of North Haven departments, town government and parent organizations, or other town governmental or not-for-profit agencies. So basically, these are town youth teams, town departments, <coughs> town organizations. Why are we creating a fee schedule for user group two? Right now, the Board of Education covers, and we always have, the Board of Education covers expenses for the use of all North Haven public school facilities. So anything that happens on our, on our facilities, um, we are covering. Now, they're, they're, let me just move on, and then I'll um, cover a couple of different a variety of points. Up until now, the Board of Education has never charged any organization to use any of our fields or facilities despite the cost to the Board of Education budget. For example, Legion Baseball, North Haven Youth Athletic Teams, we have never charged. If we continue to allow organizations outside of the North Haven Public Schools to use our fields, the budget will continue to be affected. In our budget, we budget <coughs> for the use and maintenance of our fields for our North Haven Public School athletes. We do not budget for outside organizations. 
Uh, given the tight state and local funding, we can no longer afford to cover costs that affect the Board of Ed budget, especially since interest to use our fields and facilities has recently increased. So what are the costs for field maintenance and preparation? If you talk specifically about the turf, every 100 hours <clears throat> the turf has to be um, maintained and um, that, would, that costs about $1,000. It's two men for two full days and that's really just their labor fee. These costs are based on information from Phil Diana and Frank Conley, <coughs> who is our interim school business manager. Baseball and softball field maintenance and preparation. This includes, <coughs> excuse me, the tamping of the infields, the lining of the fields, everything needed for baseball and, and softball. Lighting costs, we um, still have yet to determine exactly what the lighting costs are because this is all still very new to us and um, not really sure if, if we move forward with this, if it would really make a difference regarding what we're talking about tonight. And then of course there are custodial fees whether it's straight time or overtime, and then materials. Materials vary depending on the lining of the field, whether you have to line the lacrosse field, the baseball field, the soccer field. So these are the costs that, in the past, we have covered as the Board of Education. So why are we doing this now? Um, the Board Policy Appendix clearly displays a rental fee schedule to be applied for user groups 1 through 3. It has not been, this policy has been in place since June of 2015. However, even though this policy has been in place, we still have not charged. We have still continued to let people use our facilities and our fields. The only exception, as I mentioned before, is North Haven Youth Basketball. The reason why we charge North Haven Youth Basketball is because they use Montuese over the weekend. Montuese would not typically be open on the weekend, so we have to pay for custodial overtime. That is, that is the fee that goes to North Haven Youth Basketball. Now, presently, the way the system is set up, it's broken, and we are presently working on fixing it. In the past, the um, youth basketball would be charged, but they would pay the town. So the money never came to us. So we were still putting out money for this overtime um, and not recouping it. This is all changing and it is, we have been working on this, Frank is working on this, we've been emailing back and forth about it and it is in process. Approximately five years ago, Jenny Caldwell was charged with updating all of our Board of Ed policies and she did an <coughs> unbelievable job and as Anita mentioned, now that it's been a couple of years, we are starting to revisit some, um, some of them. This policy went untouched regarding the, uh, this part of the policy, policy, I should have said there. And when I say this part of the policy, I mean the fields. Because we knew at that time in 2015 that these turf fields were, um, actually I don't even remember at that time if it was a possibility or if it was definitely happening, but we knew that we would have to consider the turf fields. And from the very beginning, when we voted at the high school auditorium, to um, pass the budget or include in our budget the turf fields, we said that we would be charging for the use of the fields for, out, for people outside of the North Haven public school system. It was said back then. So we have not changed our plan. It's just come to fruition at this point. Now that we have the turf fields, more organizations want to use them, yet the cost of maintenance and preparation of the fields continues to be the financial responsibility of the Board of Education. Steve Blumenthal has had many people outside of the North Haven um, community <coughs> wanting to use our fields. And, and some adult fields <coughs> have actually used them over the summer for camps. So there is a lot of interest to use our fields, and we are more than willing to let them use it as long as it does not impact our um, public school teams, middle school, high school practices and games, um, or our user group two, which, are, which is our um, second priority. So where did we start? Well, we knew that we were charged with creating a fee schedule. We were never, we were never said, decide if we should charge, and if we do decide to charge, what should we charge? The char the, we were charged with 
creating a fee schedule. So it wasn't necessarily whether we were going to have one or not. It was what would the fee schedule be. What we wanted to do was cover the expenses otherwise incurred by the Board of Ed while also providing the opportunity for North Haven organizations to use the schools. <coughs> what we did to begin was we collected rental charge fee schedules for in-town nonprofit groups from surrounding public school systems with turf fields. Um, and I have two that I want to specifically show you. One, West Haven Public Schools, to use their turf field, it's $100 per game for a two-hour period. Gentleman at West Haven, his name is escaping me right now, the athletic director, said if a game goes two and a half hours, they're not charging them anymore, but they do charge $100 per game. So if you are a youth, West Haven youth soccer league team, and you want to play on their turf field, you are going to pay $100 per game. Mm -hmm. And all of this is on their website, so you can check it if you would like. Cheshire Public Schools, any Cheshire community or recreational group. To use the turf field without lights, you, get, you pay $80. With lights, you pay $110. Additional fees include any equipment you want to use, because they do not just provide it, you have to pay to use it, and any personnel that they deem um, necessary. If you um, are not tax exempt, you are paying a 6.5% tax. Everyone pays a non-refundable $100 deposit. And the rental fee begins when you enter the area to departure. So if you have a two-hour game, but you have kids show up a half an hour early and leave a half an hour later, you're paying for three hours. Not to mention, Cheshire Public Schools is a pay-to-play athletic program. So if you are a parent with a student and they um, are an athlete on a high school team, and I believe it affects middle school as well, but I'm not sure, but absolutely high school, you have to pay for your child to play a sport for their um, high school teams. And I believe it's something like $150 um, per child. So. Here are the three um, possibilities. The first one, if we stay at a current state, we get absolutely no money and every single cost is absorbed by the Board of Education. And since we were charged with finding a schedule for fees, this really isn't necessarily an option, but I wanted to put that out there. Option two, so when the, la the last time the subcommittee met, which I believe was I want to say it was around, it was in September, we came up with um, a per hour um, fee. And after talk, and Phil Diana was not there, but he had to provide us with monies to talk about the, um, the cost to do the 100 hour maintenance of the field. And, and whatever, we talked about charging extra money for lights if you chose to use the lights. We talked about if, um, if we felt that it was necessary to have custodians there, that would be an additional charge. Um, so different things like that would all have been additional fees. Now, thanks to Mr. Mero, one of our um, committee members, and he actually was not at the meeting, so he <coughs> sent this um, via email a little bit later. What he explained was, based on Nor U North Haven Youth Lacrosse usage last year, if they had 36 hours on the fields at $15 an hour, that would be $540 a week, which would total $8,640 for the season. That would require them to raise their costs by at least $50 per player. Now, the Board of Education would recoup $8,640. While that's a really great profit for us, to expect families to pay $50 per player is not something that we wanted to do to our families because we're not looking to make money off of our North Haven families. We are only looking to cover expenses incurred by the Board of Education. So, due to the time constraints and the need to get this tabled or, or discussed tonight, I should say, um, I was able to get together with Dr. Cronin and Phil Diana and Steve Blumenthal to come up with a solution and what, this is what we came up with, which is the proposal tonight. Now let me say, um, 
I know that meetings were changed, and I know that this has been tabled for two months, and although I don't feel like I necessarily need to tell you this, I will tell you that it was tabled because I could not be here for the, for the past two um, Board of Ed meetings. And I think in the six years that I've been on this board, I think I missed maybe six meetings, including the two from the past two months. And the reason I missed them was because my daughter is a, a senior, and she had some significant milestones happening in her life, and I did not want to miss that. Um, it was not because I was avoiding this night. It's not for any other reason. So um, I just wanted to put that out there because I think that was an assumption of some people. Option three, which is what we're discussing tonight. $10 per child, per sport, per season. And this has to do with the turf and the athletic complex. This assumes that roughly 100 players would utilize the sports complex and incur charges. Now, if it's more than 100 players, clearly we're making, we're getting more money. But for easy numbers, for 100 players, we're going to get $1,000. We decided that $20 per player per season would be applied to the baseball and softball fields. Now, nobody really uses the softball fields, but the baseball fields are used by Legion. Legion used to have one team and they would play 15 games. And although that cost was absorbed by us, it wasn't that big of a deal. Now, we're three teams. They have about 45 games. They take place in a summer um, season and in a fall season. And every time they have games, our maintenance and, and um, facilities people have to go out there, tamp the dirt, line the fields, mow the lawn, things that would not typically happen in the summer or in the fall, because we don't have summer or fall um, public school teams. So, the, and the reason why it's $20 is because they're not going to have a hard time scheduling things. No other teams use those fields at that time. So when they want to use the fields, they will be available for them, and they will get much more use out of them. So we put $20 per player. That will recoup um, based on 40, uh, 45 games played, and actually that should say based on 45 players, I apologize, because it's 15 per team and three teams, we would recoup $900. So, <clears throat> with this being said, a lot of um, emails and phone calls have been made, especially over the past few days, and some common co uh, comments, questions, concerns have come through, and so I thought the best way to do this, because we have a uh, limited public comment time, would be to address some of those, and hopefully my answers can, um, can answer your questions. So the first one, who covers expenses for Ridge Road Soccer Field, Monoisa Soccer Field, Green Acres Baseball Field? Well, Ridge Road Soccer Field and Monoisa Soccer Field are both taken care of by the town. The town lines the fields on both places. Who mows the lawn? for those areas and Green Acres and any elementary baseball field? We do, because there are school facilities, and we would mow that lawn anyway. At the beginning of every spring season, our facilities crew tamps down the dirt, rakes it up so it's safe, mows the lawn. There is no lining of the fields. The purpose of that is twofold. One, uh, actually three. Recess makes it safer for the kids once they get out there. Two, the phys ed teachers go out there and use the fields for their program. And three, should town teams want to go to those fields to practice or to play a game, they can. So we don't put any extra effort into those fields on a regular basis that wouldn't typically be done for the regular maintenance. Mr. Diana, yes? Correct. Thank you. I already pay taxes. Why should I, <clears throat> why should I have to pay for the use of the fields? And this is a very common thing, and I think any of us could say this to many services within the town. I pay taxes too. I don't use the senior center. Admittedly, we don't go to the library very often. But we still pay taxes that contribute to the functioning of those <coughs> things in the town. We don't use the town pool either. That doesn't mean that I'm not willing to pay my taxes and those taxes go to those different things within the town. Um, and I could also say things like, well, what if I want to go to a varsity hockey game? My family of five, we pay as we walk into that rink. Do I have the right to go to the door and say, I pay taxes, I'm not paying to watch this game? None of us do that. 
Um, we're not looking to make money. We're looking to just cover our expenses. It really has nothing to do with I pay taxes, I shouldn't pay anymore. Since the town doesn't charge to use town fields, why doesn't the town take over all of the fields? There has been discussion with Mike Frieda that this is a possibility. Now, I'm gonna, just going to read something because I don't want to misspeak. I wrote this out specifically. Discussions are ongoing with the town about the town, um, the town taking on the maintenance of the fields. The discussions are ongoing, and if agreed upon, there will be a line item in the town budget commencing of July 2019. However, if nothing is agreed upon now, which obviously it's not going to go into play for the spring, spring season, we still, as a Board of Education, have the financial responsibility to pay for the maintenance and upkeep and preparation of these fields. So the financial responsibility is still on us. If it so happens that there is an agreement between the Board of Education and Mr. Frieda and the expenses go to the town, well then we will revisit this policy and amend it and it won't be there. But for as long as we have to put monies out to cover the use of our fields, this will, if it passes, go into play. What does the $10 per player per sport cover? Well, it pretty much covers your use of your, and when I say your use, any um, group two um, group, the use of the turf field or the athletic um, complex or the baseball or softball field with lights, without lights, if a custodian is necessary, if for some reason you think security might be necessary, $10 covers that. The only time you cannot use the fields is when they are being used by our middle school or high school teams. Other than that, Steve Blumenthal will help you to schedule use of the fields between Phil and um, Andy Del Vecchio. What if my child plays a sport in the fall and a, and a sport in the spring? Well, then you pay $10 for the fall sport and you pay $10 for the spring sport. What if my child plays two sports in one season? If it's soccer and, and lacrosse, then you pay $10 for soccer, and you play, pay $10 for lacrosse. So if your registration is $100 to play lacrosse, we're asking lacrosse to add $10, you'll pay $110 for your child to play for the season. Once collected, where will this money go? <clears throat> so because this is new, Frank has created a line in our budget specifically for the incoming funds and when necessary, the outgoing funds recouped by this policy. Once collected, what will happen if we have a shortage or an excess? Well, we have, that remains to be seen. This is all new. Again, it is a work in progress. If we have a shortage, we will have to adjust. I personally, if we need to adjust, would rather adjust the prices for the outside North Haven teams. We can raise those because those prices that we're charging for outside of North Haven are significantly less than what surrounding towns are charging. I do not want to make money on, we do not want to make money on North Haven um, residents. Again, just covering our expenses. If we have an excess, <clears throat> we would have to decide what to do with that money. But it's not going to go toward instructional supplies or salaries. It's going to go either back into the maintenance or preparation of that field, or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it would just be left there for the... There won't be an excess. There probably won't be. It's barely going to make enough. Thank you, Mr. Diana. Enough. Yeah. But I did want to address that because in one of the emails it was asked. But thank you. You're right. There won't be an excess. Because really what we're charging is barely covering. If we did not have the turf fields, rental fees wouldn't have been implemented. That is not true. We have been talking for years, since my um, beginning on the Board of Ed, about charging for the use of our facilities because it has had such a significant impact on our budget. And again, because we are getting less money from the state, we have had to make concessions with the things that we do with our Board of Education budget. We c I don't feel, and this is my opinion, that we can take away from our educational budget, lessen it any more to cover um, the use of our facilities for this group two group. 
Why were fees charged between, <coughs> excuse me, why were fees changed between the last committee meeting and now? And I believe I, ex I explained that to you because of Mr. Marrow's um, email <coughs> and how we did not want to charge that excessive amount of money. Now, uh, why wasn't another meeting called before tonight's presentation to the BOE? And I guess um, I did address that before as well in stating that um, we wanted to get this discussed. We wanted to get it voted upon because I know that youth organizations are all preparing to put out their registrations. And they cannot put out their registrations if they don't know how much they need to charge for enrollment for the different sports. If we had waited another month, um, this would have just been harder on them. So in thinking about what they needed to do to prepare for their seasons, and also for wanting to get this going, because I unfortunately could not be here for the past two months, that is why we did not have another committee meeting. And I think that's it. Would you like the mic back? Yeah, well, I don't need that. I mean, unless we need to go back to something. So I'd like, as, as I stated before, um, we will allow, before the board puts this to vote, we will allow uh, some public comment. The only clarity I do want to make is, um, Randy, thank you for your presentation, is people do pay to use the pool in our town. There is a um, fee to use the town pool. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay, I just want to make yes. that, that clear. Thank you. I appreciate the clarity on that. Um, I'd also let, just like to say that I want to thank this ad hoc committee for meeting when you did and for the input uh, during the committee. So I, I want to say thank you to all of you for that. And Sally, I just saw you, that you're just thinking, so go ahead. <laughs> Actually, Sally, before you start, can I just ask, just to recognize those people, because there are a lot of people here, could you just raise your hand so that everybody knows how many of us were actually a part of all of this? So just look around, a lot of us have, have been a part of this. Sorry, thank you. No problem. Good evening, Madam Chair. Sally Blaney, 5 Boston Drive. Uh, first, I want to commend you for forming the ad hoc committee. I think it was the right decision to make. Although you might have questioned that at some points, but it was definitely. You know, if, if I may, because I will tell you, I have heard from people saying, you know, why did you appoint those people? all the different people. And and I appointed the different people because I felt that each person on this on that committee was a, a stakeholder. Everyone came from a different background. Everyone came back from a, came with a different interest. Everyone looked at something with a different um, idea of what maybe I had as a board chair. And I thought it was a very good, well rounded committee. I just wish that it, things, you know, in the last few days some of the things that I've seen were distressing, but I think it was a very good committee. You had you had really good people on it, and we we all learned a lot from that. Yes, I, I would like to to second that. I, I commend you for forming it. It was the right idea. I was honored uh, to serve, and I thank you for a, appointing me. I felt uh, qualified to serve because of my. 45 years of dedicated service to athletics and sports in North Haven. And if I can indulge you, Madam we Chair. We only have five minutes. I know. I'll be quick. <laughs> if I can just yeah. indulge you, uh, yeah, like my, my uh, uh, part of my involvement started in 1973 as a junior at North Haven High. I was on the first girls varsity softball team. The previous year, we were just a club. So in 73, we were given full varsity status, and we participated in what was then the Housatonic League, which was a precursor to the current Southern Connecticut Conference. We had a horrible season, but we were so proud to be North Haven Indians. And so from there, I was also very much involved in park and rec um, activities. So I felt qualified. <laughs> Plus, I know a little bit about municipal finance and budgeting. Um, comments regarding this? Yes, I also wanted to commend um, uh, Ms. Peterson, I thought she did a great job as chair. It was a very difficult position. She did well um, arranging uh, meetings, which were sometimes difficult to schedule. She kept us on track, and uh, I thought that she did a great job as, as, as chair. And I never questioned your two months, the past two months, and I followed the volleyball team very closely. I appreciate um, that. I, uh, getting to uh, uh, the three options, I would fully support the third option. I think that the $10 is a fair and 
a reasonable compromise as far as just covering expenses and it is uh, reasonably affordable so that it will continue to encourage uh, student, uh, uh, you know, youth participation in sports. I think uh, youth participation in sports is incredibly important in developing um, our, our character of our youth. So I think that it is an appropriate balance and I would fully um, uh, recommend that the members of the Board of Education adopt the third uh, proposal. Originally I was a little taken aback by the new proposal that came in, and I think, uh, Ms. Peterson, you could understand that, uh -huh. but after hearing your comments and your explanations, hearing from Mr. Diana, who uh, was saying that, uh, he, in his opinion, uh, it, the, the expenses would cover it, and the addition to these of the athletic complex, which we didn't really talk about that much in our committee meetings, but the addition of the athletic complex um, added another revenue source, in my opinion, that, that made the $10 possible. So once I heard all of that, uh, as you took, as you I'm sure were able to discern from the email uh, stream, uh, I quickly ad adopted support of the $10, and I would urge you all to adopt it as a formal policy, pending future changes and and accommodations. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Sure. <coughs> Hi, Nancy Barrett, uh, Crestview Drive. So uh, just just to remind everyone that uh, Eric's um, quick, uh, quick analysis was just uh, to say that grooming every 100 hours at a custodial cost of $50 an hour for eight hours is eight times 50 is 400. So $400 divided by 100 hours, that's how he came up with the, the fee of $4 an hour. So what you're saying is the actual grooming cost is more like $1,000 mm -hmm. for two people. And so then $1,000 divided by 100 hours, that's how you come up with $10, mm -hmm. $10 per hour. So that's, that's the fee. Well, no, actually, that's not how we came up with the $10. But it could be. <laughs> There's it could another be way to calculate it. Works, but right. that's not how we came up with the $10. Right. We came up with the $10 because we felt that it was a reasonable amount of money mm -hmm. that for every 100 players we would recoup $1,000 and because it takes $1,000 to do the maintenance after 100 hours that that would at least cover, it, it's a beginning, it's right, a start. Right, right, right. Right. Um, and does it need to be amended in the future? Do we need to adjust our, our rental well, this, fees? This is, this is my question. This but, is my question. But Nancy, right. again, this is our first time through Absolutely. this? Absolutely. I'm not criticizing. Yep. I'm just asking <coughs> yep. at the end of a year, we will, will you be comparing you know, costs to, to revenues? But and again, my recommendation, should that time come, would be right. to adjust the fees for outside North Haven leagues, not to adjust the fees for North Haven Absolutely. youth leagues and move them up to $15 per right. kid. We right. do not want to do that. I would rather make the monies from outside North Haven people than North Haven residents. Okay. That's my personal opinion. And and the fee, the, the ten dollar fee will or will not cover lights. Yes. It ten dollars will, will cover yes. Okay, well so that's my question. Again, um, we because it's all new to us, right? right. And we haven't sure. even really used know. them for a year. Sure. Um, we don't know. But the right. lights are on pretty much all the time anyway. It's not like we have to send somebody there to flick the lights, right? They're on. So Phil, right? Is that true? Well, we can turn them on from the house. No, I know, but but I thought that that was well, one of the things that you were doing was programming it or going yes, there personally can, yourself and turn it on. Turn so we don't need to send a person out there. We don't need to send a person. No, 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 I understand. Right. But and, there's a cost and the to difference between the time would probably be so minimal regarding the cost that we felt there was no need to do an additional cost. That ten dollars okay. per player would would start to at least begin to cover costs for us. Okay. okay. So can I just add one thing really quickly? Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm sorry to interrupt. But, Absolutely. Um, the the suggestion by Mr. Connolly to add a line item for any of the monies that come in mm -hmm. make it much easier to track the incoming versus the outgoing on this. Because mm -hmm. right now we're kind of estimating and throwing a dart at the wall. I think we want to estimate conservatively initially because of the nature of the folks who are going to use the utilize the uh, the the complex in the fields. So I think it'll be pretty transparent from this point forward because of the new line item that's coming in to be able to see like what the differential is and if we need to 
to make any adjustments to Randy's point. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a line item for revenue, but you'll have to do a calculation of the actual expenditures. There still are some right. things that need to be figured out. Sure. Um, and I think Mr. Diane is all over that. Great. And okay. so is Mr. Bogan and working with Mr. Connolly. Right. Yep. So I'd just like to say thank you very much for giving this presentation. I thought you did a great job, <coughs> and I completely support this. I appreciate so, it. Thank you. Hello, um, Christine Tercio, One Pine River. Um, I just want to correct you on the whole basketball thing. Sure. Because they are paying for other schools. It's 12 weeks and they're charging 20000 So they're paying for Monoe's Middle School and High School. It's 15000 and they charge for the middle school. Right, so on her presentation, she just said Monoese. Right. So it's all the schools. Oh, because I mentioned just Monoese. Got you. Yeah. I apologize. There's four schools of overtime on Saturdays, mm -hmm. and they're giving the schools free during the week because we're open until 10 o'clock. Gotcha. Okay, my apologies. Honest mistake. Thank you. Thank you for correcting that. Yeah, thank you. you know, Dave, Mike is 30 Central Avenue. Um, the $10 is not the biggest issue. I mean, $10 to a youth group is a significant amount of money. If there's 200 people in the youth group, that's $2,000. Um, that's 15 or 20 helmets for us. So it's a, it's a significant amount of money, but it's not an overwhelming amount of money. The problem that I think a lot of people have is the consistency that this policy is not being, the, the inconsistency of this policy not being spread throughout all the schools, all the facilities, all the groups, and all the users. Um, it's just the sport groups that are being charged for use of facilities and fields. Why aren't other groups true. being charged for the use of the building? And, you know, go down the list of, of groups that are using the facilities, and not everybody's being charged. And it seems very arbitrary. You may say it's not true, but it seems very arbitrary. Arbitrary. Um, it would be nice if, if this group, before they imposed a dollar amount to the value, if you had done the actual <coughs> dollars and cents evaluations. I think it's a lot more than $35 an hour to take care of some of those grass fields. I think it's probably a lot less than 100 hours of grooming or, or, or $1,000 of grooming for two men for two full days for two turf fields. Um, you can drag that thing around there pretty quickly. So okay. I think there's a lot of hours involved, Phil. That, that you can only drag it three Okay, Phil? Well, it, either way, no, I, I wish. We're I wish not going to go back and forth. I, I don't want to go back. We I wish. Five, that, we had a five minute that went went over. I'm giving you the respect. Thank to, you. I to, wish that there was more that. detail presented in the information and the costs, other than a dollar amount being thrown out because we thought it was fair because we wanted to let, let the other groups do their budgets before the season started. So I wish that the group had done that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and Mr. Mike, this will be the, I'm sorry, Mr. Montana. Thank you. I always get confused for Dave. Yeah, Dave Montana, know, Highland Park Road. Um, I was also on the committee, and I want to thank uh, Anita and Randy for allowing me to be on the committee. Um, and again, to echo what uh, Mr. Mike has said, it has really nothing to do with the $10. It is more of the consistency. And <clears throat> as a parent in town, I have two kids that already graduated. I think one of the biggest concerns is folks will look at and say, is this field a town field or is it a Board of Ed field? Well, as a parent, it's a field. And now, if your son is playing baseball and is playing for Max Sinaway, you're not, there's no charge for that. That's a town field. Yet, if your son is going to play soccer and needs to use the turf field, you're going to be charged for it. And I think we can't look at this with blinders and say, this is just a Board of Ed decision that we need to make. We need to make it as a town. And that's really why I think that vote should not take place tonight. You really need to step back and think, are we doing what's best for the town of North Haven, not just for the Board of Ed? And again, it has nothing to do with the, uh, the $10 fee. And another item, the town pool, we talk about the town pool, the town pool, there was a lot of emails going back and forth. The town pool is utilized by the swim team. Does the town charge the Board of Ed to use the pool? The answer is no. So why doesn't the town recoup from the Board of Ed? We, we all have an obligation in town to co-sponsor things and sporting events, and that's really what I think we need to do as a town. We can't just, like I said, have blinders up and say, well, this is a town, this is Board of Ed. We're all a town. Thank you. I'll be really fast, actually. So 
Amy Holt Frost Drive. I just want to note that the, the and thank you, Ms. Peterson, was very nice to talk to me this week, and I really do appreciate her time. Just to note that the two schools that were mentioned are Cheshire and West Haven High School. Both of those facilities are CIAC state facilities. So they come with covered bathrooms, a concession stand, and the ability to charge individuals to come in. As a group, and, and I'm the representation for the North Haven Lacrosse Association and League, is that we don't have that facility even to additionally fundraise on top of that because there's not that availability. So to take that into consideration, and, I, and there are other surrounding towns that the Board of Ed has an agreement with the youth leagues in order to not charge them. That is, there is a non-for-profit organization that is identified <coughs> for the use of turf fields or other building usage for their permits, but what the concerning part is is that they, we can all come to an agreement together. But to use those two fields as examples is that they are CIAC state used facilities and, and they are, to be honest, bigger and better facilities than what we will be working with. So. Thank you. Yeah. Any comments? No, we're done. Okay. So at this point, what I would like to do is make a motion to approve the rental charges for the turf and athletic complex fields regarding policy 3515B group 2 which refers to the town of North Haven departments, town government and parent organizations or other town government or not for profit agencies. So I need to go to um, I need somebody to make a motion. I made the motion so somebody has to. Oh, so moved. Second. Discussion? So I just have a couple of questions. <coughs> sure. What do you consider the complex? I think that needs to be. That's that gated area over um, where the um, varsity baseball, varsity softball, and the... Um, where the girls softball has their games? Mm -hmm. And the, um, what are we calling it an all-purpose field now? What are we calling it? All-purpose. Yeah. So there are three fields in there that can be used. Well, actually, there's five. You know, oh, really? Two, junior varsity. Mm -hmm. Oh, two varsity. Right. tennis courts, too? <coughs> and tennis courts. And tennis courts. Balls are used by, those are open all the time for anyone who wants to use Pardon? The tennis courts are open all the time Anytime. for anyone who wants to use Will that change? In the town, no, the town actually just renovated the mall, spent about $45,000 resurfacing the entire one. Are they board of ed tennis courts or town tennis courts? I beg your pardon? Are they board of ed tennis courts or town tennis courts? Uh, they're both at this time. Well, who's maintaining them, Phil? There's really minimal maintenance on them, but we do it when needed. Okay. Well, what I'd like to say, and if, if possible, is as we vote on this and if it should pass for this year, from now to July mm -hmm. of 2019, is we need to have some serious conversations with, with the town, mm -hmm. find out what, how that will work for, for if they take over over the fields as we discussed. Mm -hmm. We need to understand before we can allow something like that, we have to understand how does that affect our uh, maintenance department regarding the union? Does that violate any union rules? Yes. So there's a lot of things that need to be done before we can just go back and say, okay, let's just hand it over to the town and the town's responsible for for it. So that is something that I would like to see that we do and even maybe get us our committee together, smaller if need be, to talk with the town and get an idea from them what, what it is that we're going to be doing and then we would have to get our attorneys involved to look about at the um, union issues, if there are any union, union issues. That, that's where, where I'm looking right now. I don't know if anyone else from the board has any comments to make on our discussion. I spoke to Mr. Frieda today a couple of times, and we've spoken a couple of times in the past couple of months regarding this issue exactly. Um, and we did say today that we would get together and have discussions and see what next steps would be because it's not just as easy as saying, okay, you take it. Um, but there would definitely be discussions surrounding it and, and looking at the implications for both the town as well as the board of ed. So that will happen. Can I ask a question? Sure. Is there the possibility if we um, go through and we track everything, we fully understand what the total costs are, is there an opportunity for the town to provide us some kind of grant? 
for, to cover the cost there, because that might simplify and, and simplify the union issue instead of them taking control of it over it. Um, I'm not sure if that's something that we do, but I figured I'd throw that out there. I don't know, but it's definitely something to be part of the discussion. Yeah. It's a good idea. <laughs> Anybody else? I, I, yeah, and I think part of this is also too. We don't know where our where the state is going to be with funds. We have been very, very lucky educationally with what has been given to us um, through grants that we apply for, for what um, we've been able to get from Harper. But we have a new administration going in. We have new, we're, and we don't know what they're going to bring to us. And this is something t that I believe the Board of Ed should have probably put into effect five years ago when we started it. But we always had a reason not to, as, as you said. We started that policy and stopped it, by the way, in 2014. That was when we first voted for the um, fields. And when we speak to um, organizations like the Boy Scouts, and I'm just going to use this as an example, if the Boy Scouts go to Ridge Road and they use the cafeteria or something like that, we have custodians during the week there until, as Phil stated, until 10 o'clock. So there is no additional expense for us. If the Boy Scouts were to use a school on a Saturday afternoon and we had to open the school specifically for the use, then the Boy Scouts fall under this user group too. Now, how do we go about that if they use it one time? I don't know. But we're not talking about a one-time game or a one-time practice. We're talking about consistent use or a lot of use over a lot of hours. And once those hours add up, the financial implications would affect the Board of Education budget. Okay. So, um, we'll continue. So, okay, so what do I say? All in favor. All in favor. <laughs> All in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion passes. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Peterson, for your proposal. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, may I have a motion to approve the standing committee's reports? So moved. All in favor? Uh, <coughs> opposed. Yeah. Staff communications, Dr. Cronin? Yes. So, um, two things that I just wanted to um, discuss with you tonight. The first is, in, at the October meeting, you may recall that I mentioned that the state had released the um, school security competitive grant. Um, it was round four. Um, we, were, we were awarded funds in round one. We, um, we applied in round two, did not receive any. Um, round three was something that was done through the town. This time, um, we were eligible to apply again. We did. So we submitted our grant on December 4th. And um, Jen Kosniewski and Phil Diana and Frank Conley, our interim business manager, were very helpful um, to me in completing the grant, um, each putting a good deal of time and effort into it. The grant required that we list um, all of the security upgrades being proposed at each building. So as it happens, um, we were well positioned for that. <coughs> Last spring, we did a security audit of all six schools and um, submitted that information to Mr. Frieda he, as he requested. But in order to get the information at that time, um, Jen Kosniewski, our director of IT, walked both the inside and the outside of each building with an engineer from utility communications and a representative from the company Security 101. So they, they identified where we were vulnerable and then they gave us a cost estimate at that time as we were doing, as we were doing the work. So the grant's designed such that the district is eligible to be reimbursed at the rate that it's reimbursed for other projects, 39.64%. <coughs> so our total grant that we submitted is for $1,416,919. And if we were to receive 39.64% of that, um, we would receive $561,666. 
So it would be a significant contribution to the work that needs to be done. We, um, we have kept Mr. Frieda and Mr. Swinkowski aware of the work uh, we've been doing as we've been going along. We've provided them actually with a, a copy of the um, grant application because this is really sort of a unified um, partnership, if you will. And um, going forward, I don't know when we'll hear. Typically, these kinds of things take a few months. But going forward, I'll keep you apprised of you know everything that I learn. As, uh, as I we hope we forward. get it. I do too. Mm -hmm. um, so that uh, the other issue we talked a little bit about already, and that has to do with the budget workshops in January. But I think we've resolved that. So, you know, we had talked about um, starting them on the 17th at our October meeting, and then we realized that that would be a problem with getting the information to the board in time, or to the Board of Finance in time. So I think that if we were to bump things such that on January 10th, we covered our elementary um, budgets and facilities on January 17th, we did middle school, high school, and the athletics program, and then January 24th, we do special services and educational and informational technology. That will give us time then after the board adopts the budget to make the revisions we need to make and get them to the town hall within the five days that they'd like. So I think, um, and we answered my other questions that I had in terms of what time we want to get started. Um, that's everything that I have for tonight. Can we? Um, um, send an email to the Board of Finance members letting them know when we're meeting because I would always love for them to actually come in here for a idea. thorough discussion. Because that's our workshops, correct? Those are the workshops yeah. in January. Yeah. So even for them to just be aware of when the dates are, so mm -hmm. should they decide to come and listen to our reasoning and discussion behind the decisions? Yeah. Can we Thank have you. our workshops televised? We typically do the last one. I don't know why we just choose the last one. I mean, I don't know. <coughs> uh, yeah, we typically do the last one. If we, can. We, can, we can look into having them televised. I mean, because, sure. you know, some of the Board of Finance, I'm sure they sit on more than one committee. And if they could see it online, I'm hoping, you know, if they couldn't come to the meeting. Yeah, I really would like to have them yeah. here, though. I, I would, too. Yeah. Oh, yes, well, not a, we, you know. We'll look into having them done. We'll, we'll talk to NHTV and I'll look into it. Well, and, and also, not only for the Board of Ed, but just for the, the residents, mm -hmm. for them to have a greater understanding mm -hmm. of what takes place during a budget season and how it's broken down, I, I think would be valuable. Thank you. What is that noise? Somebody talking? Or yes. people on the phone? People oh, okay. The oh, didn't realize that. Um, okay, thanks, Dot. Melinda? Um, I just wanted to uh, follow up on some of the grant work that's been going on um, to kind of dovetail what Dr. Cronin said. Our consolidated grants have been submitted and um, they've been approved. So our Title I and II grants will continue to be used to support some positions, our teachers' college training at the elementary and professional development. Um, we received a small allocation for Title III, our EL funds, so we will use that again this year at Green Acres because that is our highest population. And then um, we also had a, a bump up in our Title IV grant, which is a new grant that came last year. We had uh, $10,000 last year. This year it's about almost $17,000. And I wrote it so that we could um, bring in some part-time technology integration coach hours and that person will be able to work side by side with classroom teachers around planning and utilizing all of the new devices and technology that um, we have in the district. So um, Jen and I are working collaboratively on that and we were just awarded the money so we'll be able to post um, right. in the next few days. Yeah. Yeah. On behalf of the Lord, I know we all want to thank you for the grant application that we look into every grant and I appreciate the we work see that we, it's the whole board worth does. Trying. All they can say is no. Uh, for Title III, for the EL population, what's happening with our EL population right now? And has there been an increase or... It's about the same as it's been. Green okay. Acres tends to be our largest um, population so we put our tutor resources there. But our numbers are fairly manageable with um, the tutor in place. 
um, finance and operations, but there's really no report. Frank's not here. See the budget meeting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to go to public comments. Mary? Mary White Summerlee. I wanted to give the um, the board an update on funding for turf field amenities. When I last spoke to you, I had mentioned how while we are waiting for the pilot money, which is payment in lieu of taxes from Quinnipiac to be utilized for turf field amenities, not next year because that money is going to the fire department's training facility, but the year after 2020, <clears throat> I had stated I would write a letter to the chair of the middle school building committee and the building committee members and request they prioritize amenities, decide specifics and approximate costs so the town is ready should a state grant become available um, in 2019, the next legislative session. Re uh, Representative Dave Yaccarino stated they are not in session now, but he and Senator Len Pisano will be on the lookout once they are in session. Mike Frieda had stated at a Board of Selectmen meeting, the Finance Department, the BOE, and Lynn Sadowski are also always on the lookout for state grants. So I would like to read the letter I wrote to Gary <coughs> Johns and the members of the Middle School Building Committee. The subject was amenities, turf fields. Please forward to Middle School Building <coughs> Committee members. <coughs> so it was regarding Funding and preparation for amenities for turf fields dated November 9th, 2018. Dear Gary Johns and Middle School Building Committee members, at a recent Board of Selectmen meeting, I asked First Selectman Mike Frieda if money in lieu of taxes from Quinnipiac University could be used to pay for amenities at the turf fields. Mike answered yes. However, next year's payment or payments will be going to the fire department's training facility. But after that, the money can be utilized for turf field amenities. Mike also stated state grants could also <coughs> be sought. I would like to request the Middle School Building Committee prioritize amenities. After that, please decide the specifics, type, design, quantity, location, etc., of all the amenities and come up with approximate costs. This way, when money in lieu of taxes from Quinnipiac University becomes available, and or if a grant is received, the, the Board of Education in the town will be ready to proceed with amenities because the preparation information had already been completed. This will prevent or greatly reduce lag time between the time money is received and when construction of and or purchase of amenities can proceed. Here is a list of amenities. Feel free to modify if necessary. Scoreboards, bleachers, concession stand, bathrooms, press box, Ticket collection booth stand structure, which is necessary to host CIAC <coughs> events. Thank you all for your continued hard work and dedication. Mary White. So after the next middle school building committee meeting took place and then it aired, I noticed my letter was not read nor discussed. I phoned Gary Johns, chair of the middle school building committee, uh, to discuss. He confirmed he received the email, read it, but <coughs> he did not forward the email to the Middle School Building Committee members as I had requested. He discussed how the Building Committee has other pressing matters to deal with, such as the gym floors, getting quotes, and awarding the project. He mentioned the next big item the Building Committee will discuss is the track. He acknowledged there will be no money for turf field amenities. I explained how the pilot money from Quinnipiac will be available for purchase of turf field amenities in 2020. However, there may be a state grant for turf field amenities which the town could apply in the 2019 legislative session. I explained the importance of the town being prepared with turf field amenities specifics, type, design, quantity, location, approximate costs. This way, when funding becomes available, there is little or no lag time between the time the town receives the money and when the construction and or purchase of amenities can begin. Money for turf field amenities will definitely be available in 2020. I asked Gary when he thought the building committee would be able to prioritize 
and come up with amenity specifications and approximate costs. He stated, not until next year, maybe February or later. What I will do next is to reach out to Gary in February of 2019 and ask him the status of the discussion and the decisions about the turf field amenities. And then I will also, I'm also going to try and get the middle school building committee members' emails so I can forward my email to them next year because apparently Gary didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the update. Great. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for, for doing that work for us. Oh, you're Any other public comments? Yes, I have a quick question. Um, as you all know, over the summer, there was some construction work that was done at Ridge Road School as part of the police department um, renovations, the $18 million project. And part of it was the $4 million communication system. And so there was some work that was done at Ridge Road to remove uh, two existing towers, replace them with a much larger tower, as well as um, build a what they call some sort of a structure outside that also con contains much of the equipment that's needed for this um, wireless communication system. So my question is, has this type of construction gone on in any other school or just at Ridge Road? Right now it's just been at Ridge Road. Just at Ridge Road. Right. And I, I understand that this actually has no impact on any functioning of the school. It doesn't have anything to do with <coughs> Wi-Fi or you know anything to do with the actual operation of the school. It really is just a function of its geolocation. It's way up on a hill. Correct. And so therefore, the school has been, been selected. Well, uh, I, I, if I may, and Patrick, um, Mr. Sturtz, please um, sure. interject. Um, my understanding is that the, that equipment has always been housed in that, that area for the communications within the fire department. So they didn't change anything from what was done originally, they just made some additions. It was an upgrade. They, they upgraded it, uh, correct? Yes. Right. I think, I think some of the equipment was actually in the building, yeah. and they moved it all outside and built a like 12 by 15 looking like a closet on the, <laughs> at ground level, so you pass it as you walk right into the building. Um, and then the, the tower, of course, is much, much larger and has antennas that come off it. So, so my concern, of course, was for the safety of both the staff and the students that were there over the summer during summer school as well as, you know, attending the camp there while all this construction was going on. And then secondarily, uh, the actual safety profile of this new communication system, which is clearly much more powerful, um, and has anyone actually evaluated the specifications of this communication system and the, you know, the radio frequency radiation that comes off of these wires and, and so forth? And so I brought this to the attention of the Board of Selectmen, um, as well as brought it to the attention of Quinnipiac Valley Health District. They really couldn't address this question. Uh, I was a little bit surprised that a bonded project actually didn't have some input that looks into the impact on humans and the environment uh, when, when in instituting you know, significant changes. Um, so it was kicked up to the state uh, Department of uh, Health and Environmental Protection, and they wrote back in September saying that they did not have uh, the ability to actually evaluate the specifications that were provided by the vendor. So the vendor is saying this is perfectly safe. <laughs> but again, this sounds again like the, the, uh, the fox in the hen house where we're dependent upon a vendor to tell us whether something is safe or not. So uh, I still have some, some significant concerns about this, this communication system as we're all worried about you know, the effects of using cell phones and, and all the cumulative effects of low-grade radiation uh, in our environment. Um, so I'm continuing to, to pursue this and see if I can find some outside expertise. But my first step was to find out if this is going on in any of the other schools. And to your, to your okay. knowledge, it's not. OK, thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other public comments? <coughs> yes. Thank you, Sally. Blame me still on Five Blossom Drive. <laughs> uh, I have something to say about the turf fields. I didn't say it earlier because it wasn't related to the fee schedule, but it was something that we talked about 
at our ad hoc committee meetings a little bit, and that was um, a sign, signs at the um, turf fields. I'm very, I was there today, and again, the only sign is a sign right by the gate that can't be more than a legal size piece of paper that says, you know, no gum, no candy, no this, wear these shoes, wear that. Vanacor Field, right across the way, has a big sign when you walk in, no trespassing, no using this field without prior uh, authority. I live near the turf fields, and I go there often. And I, I went there a lot more in the first six months they were up than I have the past six months. But I do go there regularly. And at least, Madam Chair, at least a half a dozen times, I've seen people of all ages, children and adults, hopping the fence and getting on and doing whatever on the fields. As an attorney practicing personal injury law for 35 years, I'm very concerned about the lack, a year later, Absolutely. of a no trespassing sign, <laughs> of a don't use this without authority sign. Um, I'm not a municipal premises liability expert. However, I've had probably a dozen such cases in my career. And they never end well for the municipality. You're and in, right. in one particular case that I had uh, two years ago, the lack of signs was the crucial element applying liability to the municipality. So we I would urge you to contact the Board of Ed Council and please we will put have up signs, signs on that turf. On Excuse those me? Fence. We will have signs on that field no later than. Be by the time people get back from um, Christmas holiday. Okay. We will have those. Right. As I think they're long overdue. As a citizen, as a taxpayer, as a member <coughs> of the Board of Selectmen. I can't disagree. As a, as a premises liability attorney, all sorts of lights are going off in my head. Please get some signs up that at least say no trespassing and no use without prior authority. Thank you. Thank you. So we also talked about um, how there are cameras on those fields. Right. So I don't know what the verbiage is for that, but we'll we'll get our attorney to yeah. right. <clears throat> I know we're in public comment, but I would just like to make one statement on um, Veterans Day weekend. I, I am part of the North Haven Rotary, as many of you know, and we have a pancake breakfast at the middle school to honor our veterans. It's really a nice community <coughs> thing. But there was a lacrosse tournament on our fields that um, day. All right, so parking wasn't that great, but it was a nice, uh, it was a, a wonderful venue. And at the end of the day, uh, breakfast, we had a lot of coffee left over, and there were a lot of people sitting on the fe on the benches, looking at the games, waiting for their games. I will say we probably got about five to ten <coughs> people came in for the breakfast. I was so proud to hear parents talk to me as I offered them, "Do you want some coffee?" I said, "Oh, because there's no no concession." Talk to me and tell me how beautiful our fields are, how well. Everything was maintained and the cleanliness of the area. And at that time, they obviously they didn't know I was part of the uh, a cheer person for the Board of Ed or part of the Board of Ed. And I, I just wanted to share that with the board and also with other people to know, you know, it, they're beautiful and they're they're being played on and being appreciated by other people. So. Okay, if there's no more public comment, the board has to enter into oh future agenda items. Sorry, one thing. Uh, my future agenda item I'd like to add is that in January we have that discussion for the ad hoc committee about the um, 2019. Yeah, just because the budget's coming up. February, February, thank you. Yeah, I was going to say let's do February. Yeah, I'm, I forgot January. See how quickly I forget? Come back to these signs too to be sure that everything is in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the signs will both be on the uh, future agenda. And with that, the board needs to go into executive session for uh, matters of student personnel matters and contract negotiations. We may have a motion to enter into executive session. So moved. Second. Second. Anyone want to talk about it? <laughs> no discussion. All in favor, we're going. Session at 3.30. 3.30? Excuse me. <laughs> we have come. I'm off tomorrow. I am so happy. Uh, You're off right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, look. Okay, we can have an executive session at 8.30. May I have a motion to approve the proposed collective bargaining agreement between the North Haven Board of Education and the North Haven Educational Association? So moved. Second. Second. 
Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 May I have a motion to adjourn at 831? So, so moved. Second? Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Wishing happy you holidays all. all. Wishing you all a you. happy <laughs> holiday. I look forward to seeing some. We'll see. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at NHTV.com.